When I first got into cybersecurity, I thought it was all just hacking, dog terminals, adrenaline, running in and out. But no one really told me the realistic factors of what an everyday life look like, depending on your path. If you're thinking about getting into cybersecurity or you're already in it and you're questioning it, this video is for you. This is 10 things I wish I personally knew before I got into cybersecurity. Number one, it's not just all hacking. Like I thought it was just gonna be <laughs> breaking into systems all day, terminals all day. And in reality, depending on your path that you select, it may look similar to that, but even, even if you're like an ethical hacker or even a pen tester, it may look somewhat like that some similarities but not what you see in Hollywood nine times out of ten if you work in the SOC or GRC you're looking at a lot of reading a lot of risk a lot of alerts a lot of compliance work a lot of tickets a lot of customer interaction a lot of policies and procedures and yes there is some technical things depending on your role Hacking is not 100% of the part. It may be, depending on your role, 2%, 5%, or someone like an ethical hacker or even red teaming or even offensive teaming could be maybe 35 40%. But even as a pen tester and ethical hacker, you still have that paperwork side. You still have that compliance side. You still have those risk assessment side. So it's not just... Hacking 100%, even in that aspect as well, there's still that risk and assessment compliance part as well to it. One thing that I wish I truly, really, really knew is you don't need to know everything. In the beginning, I didn't know where to turn, which way to go. So the best way I knew was to go to school. I thought school was going to tell me everything that I needed to know. Luckily, it wasn't that expensive, and luckily I was fortunate enough to be able to pay out of pocket for it. So I didn't have to take out loans or anything like that. But I thought school was going to teach me everything. And that was one of the biggest misconceptions I had. I figured I'm going to go to school. I'm going to do these labs. I'm going to learn every tool. I'm going to know everything I need to know just from going to school, taking tests, learning, learning different lessons doing homework doing projects and I think that's one of my biggest things I wish I would have done differently I don't want to say I regret it just because I everything I've done in the past has gotten me to the point where I am right now you live and you learn but I feel like I should have not wasted so much time in the beginning I wasted so much time trying to learn cybersecurity, study cybersecurity, and not just do cybersecurity. If I would have just put my feet in the water, went head first, you sink or swim, if I had that mentality, I probably would have been so much further than I am now, almost two years later. And for me, I think I just felt like I needed to know everything that I didn't even allow myself to pick a path and specialize in that path. So if you're trying to get into cybersecurity, that is probably the number one priority I would probably say to you is honestly find your path, find what you're interested in, and don't try to learn everything at one time. If cert if certifications is the route you want to go, that's the route you want to go. I do have a, a point on that one. But if that's the route you want to go, that's the route you want to go. But make sure if you're doing certifications, know why you're doing it and have a skill set and a reason behind it and make sure that it is allowing you to push forward with your journey. Number three, back into the certs. Certs help you, but it's not a golden ticket. Sometimes and oftentimes certifications are just to get your way in through the door for maybe a hiring manager or HR in my opinion, it's not going to land you a job per se. Some will be requirements for jobs, but it also is 
incorporated with experience as well. So like you may need a security plus or you may need, depending on like your role, let's say um, a DRC, you may need a audit type of um, certification. You may need some form of compliance or GRC certifications if you're trying to go the GRC route, but that won't necessarily land you a job. And I feel like the cert chasing was, I spent a lot of time like, oh, I need to get this cert. I need to get this cert. And still to this day, I don't even have that many certs. I have Security Plus, a Certified Ethical Hacker, and I was working on my CISSP. That's it, like for the known certifications. But outside of that, I feel like when you're starting out, people tell you to get so many certifications, get this certification, get this certification, you need this certification. And honestly, like certifications are a lot sometimes because you pay money to get a certification. Then two, three years later, you have to pay a fee to keep that certification up to date or because you thought you had to get that certification to get into cybersecurity. Certifications are building blocks to help you with certain skills. They won't necessarily guarantee that you will be able to get a job or even do a job. There are a lot of people out here that have 20, 30 certs and still honestly can't do their job. It's sad to say, but you don't need certifications to land a job. You don't need certifications to get in a job. Certifications to me are skill focused. If you want to enhance or get better on a certain skill, you get a certification based on that. Or if you need a certification for a particular role, most of the time I will probably have my job fund that certification if need be or if available to you just because you don't really need certifications the certifications are just there to nine times of the team get you through hr and get you through the door so if you want to get a certification i personally would recommend beginner entry level security plus there are a lot of roles that require security plus especially in the government space so i would kind of just leave it at that and keep rolling one thing I feel like a lot of people throw under the rug is soft skills. Your soft skills are important. You need to be able to explain certain things to people, explain to your team, have organizational skills, be able to document those non-technical things and put on paper to allow those non-technical people to understand. Like for instance, if I'm a security engineer and I need to go talk to my risk and compliance person, I need to be able to dumb that down a little bit and not have that technical terminology all the time. I have to be able to have that communication aspect where, hey, you know, we have this vulnerability that came into, how can we avoid this risk? How can we do X, Y, and Z to mitigate this risk for the company? Not like, oh yeah, hey, our server went down and this particular parameter, da, da 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 like you want to be able to have a communication skill set, organizational skill set, set those soft skills that you just need to have on a day to day that can set you apart. And I feel like if I would have known that, I would have been far along. But I feel like I already walked in the door having those skill sets because I worked in help desk. But for the average person, they may not not know that. They may think it's all technical, all ones and zeros and terminals and stuff like that. And, and honestly, you have to be able to have those soft skills because who wants to just talk to somebody that only knows the technical side, only knows technical terminology, and only really knows how to speak from a technical standpoint you want to have somebody that can talk to customers and non-technical people as well this one I feel like applies to every single thing in life but in sub security I just feel like it hits different when it comes to career like the burnout in cyber security is real like real real and it's levels to it like a lot of people especially when they're starting out, want to study and learn everything and do a million things at one time. They want to do CTFs. They want to learn how to do ethical hacking. They want to do pen testing. They want to do SOC. They want to do everything under the sun. And 
depending on your workload, depending on what you got going on at that time while you're also trying to learn, it can be a lot, especially if you already in that field and you trying to study and it's a number of things. The burnout in this field is crazy. Like you always you always got to be on go. You always have to have the urgency to learn something new. Keep up with the trends. Keep up with this. It's pressure. It's pressure in this line of defense, and you constantly have to enhance your skills. You constantly have to keep up with what Anonymous is doing. Like, you have to keep up with that. And the having to prioritize and balance that in your life, especially in the early stages, is something that I feel like a lot of people need to be able to know and just not know and have it together, but just know, like, what they're walking into because – it can be real, and I feel like some a lot of people don't know what they're really signing up for. So that's just something, like, I personally wish that I would have known. Like, the burnout is going to be crazy. Like, there's a lot of things in life and, and careers in life that you'll go through that you'll burn out. But with cybersecurity, in my opinion, in my personal opinion, it can be a lot. Number six, impersonation syndrome is going to be there probably throughout your whole career. It's common. You're not alone. Like, you always going to feel like the next person or the person that's around you knows more than you. But in my opinion, like, you have to start somewhere. And cybersecurity, in my opinion, is a team sport. Like, you can't do it by yourself. So allow yourself to grow. Allow yourself to learn from others. Allow yourself to realize that technology and cybersecurity never stops growing. It never stops getting more sophisticated. So even if you think this person next to you knows everything, they can't know everything if a new vulnerability comes out tomorrow. They won't know about it. So you just have to give yourself grace and allow yourself to continue to grow with this field that is everlasting growing. It's going to continue to grow forever. So don't be hard on yourself and just realize when you are in the stage of imposter syndrome that you aren't alone and you do deserve to be in that space as long as you continue to put in the work and you continue to have some form of guidance or strategy you'll be okay number seven this kind of ties into with imposter syndrome you're going to break things you're going to make mistakes nothing is perfect in this field like hey a computer isn't even perfect sometimes that thing even throw errors here and there so like Allow yourself to learn from your mistakes, break things, fix things. Go along with the journey because allowing your mistakes to help you grow will always be your best, one of your best assets in life. Just grow, make mistakes, break things, fix things, understand how things work, and you'll set yourself apart from a lot of people because you took a risk to make that mistake. People think mistakes are bad, mistakes are good. In most situations, and I feel like in any situation, even if you made a mistake in a, in a serious situation, there's a learning aspect from that. You took something away from that. That's learning. Learning comes with growth, and growth allows you to learn. This one I feel like is really important. Tech changes fast, but fundamentals don't. Always keep your fundamentals. Always learn your fundamentals, and always remember your fundamentals. When you first get into cybersecurity, I feel like a lot of people learn the fundamentals and then they forget about them. But in any career aspect, in any aspect of life, your fundamentals and your basics are always going to stick with you all the time. So networking, understanding how the computer works, the simple things will always be what you take along with you. Even though tech is changing, those foundational skills are still going to be there. Learning how a system works, you always gonna remember back how something how something happened back then. It may still apply today. A lot of people think that they don't want to get into help desk because they just want to go into cybersecurity. For me, going into help desk before I went into cybersecurity allowed me to be a better security person because I deal with customers. So I have that foundational customer service experience. I have that experience with dealing with tickets and understanding that I have the experience with understanding how a system works, how a network works, how to support a computer hand first and first hand before even worrying about 
the attack that happened on the computer. Learning just the basics will get you so far. Even though these tools may change and things may improve and everything like that, those core concepts will always stay the same. It's like if I'm playing basketball and I'm working on my shot or I need to find a, way, a new way to work on my shot, that goal is still the same. The basket is still the same. The only thing you're changing is how you approach going into that basket. It's foundation. Your foundation will carry you far along if you just are very deep rooted in the basics and very deep rooted in the foundations. But don't spend too much time on it, overthinking it. Just learn it, understand it, and then move on. Number nine, there are so many paths, like so many. And I personally didn't know which path I wanted to go in the beginning. I just knew I wanted to get into cybersecurity in whatever way that looked like. For me, I got in through SOC, but looking back on it, like I'm in the SOC now and I realize I'm geared more to red teaming. So I want to go on my, my learning journey on red teaming. But if I would have did that early on in my early stages, I probably would have been a junior pen tester by now or even a pen tester. But if I would have identify my path early on and not just I want to get into cyber security let me get the, the security plus let me get the a plus let me get the help desk job and just honing on what path I wanted to get in first I probably would have been where I wanted to be right now but again that comes with learning that comes with growth that comes with making mistakes because your journey is your own so the journey I took was probably on purpose like it, it was meant to happen that way it allowed me to see if I would have just had a strategy and had a guidance beforehand I would have been in a different situation but I wouldn't change it for the world because I'm allowing myself to go through this new journey of learning new things but I just feel like don't lock yourself into one lane too soon because once I got in that sock analyst role that was in game for me at that time like i'm like oh i'm in like i don't have nothing to worry about so what did i do i stopped studying i stopped le really learning i got comfortable and i don't want you to make those same mistakes that i did so find you a pad do what you gotta do figure out which pad you want to take and tone in on, on that don't Go full tunnel zones, tunnel vision, and then you forget everything else. Explore some a few paths. So, like, if you want to go in red team, blue team, and sock, those are three different paths. You can go and try hack me right now. Explore both the all three of those paths, and out of after you finish those three paths, you can really decide what you want. Even though some things kind of cross each other, some skills cross each other. They are pretty much different. So allow yourself to explore, navigate, and then decide. But definitely find your path and, and stick with it and not get comfortable with whatever falls into your lap. And last but not least, this one is the most important for the beginners. It is okay to be a beginner. Like I'm going through my whole new journey of being a beginner with my Wi-Fi hacking journeys. It is okay. You will not know everything just because everything is constantly changing. Allow yourself to be a newbie. Allow yourself to be somewhere. You have to start somewhere. Everyone starts somewhere. So don't compare your day one to somebody else else's five years. Don't compare my year and a half to your three months. Everyone starts somewhere Everyone has their own journey and everyone has their own process. Stay true to you, stay true to your process, and you will be A-OK. -okay. These were the 10 things I wish I knew before I got into cybersecurity. If this helped you, go ahead and give this a thumbs up, give this a sub, and I'll see y'all for the next video. Y'all stay good, y'all stay learning, y'all stay hacking, and keep it easy.